Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Fire crews working on a fire at a local taqueria overnight. We have Sarah Costa live with the latest details. Coming up, coronavirus concerns what health officials are doing to stop the spread. I'm Andrew Dimber in Washington. And live cam giving us a look outside. It is cold out there this morning, but we don't have the wind we had yesterday. My cash forecast. And that is a huge difference. Good morning to you. It is 430 on your Thursday. It is February 27th. And it is literally freezing outside. 30 degrees, Mike. Not done yet. And we're not done. We'll probably drop down a couple more degrees. Usually really? the coldest time of the morning when you have clear skies, really dry air. There's a hint of a breeze out there. So yes, we do have wind chills, but it's right around sunrise because you know, just keep dropping down, dropping down until the sun comes up. So. Could it be a little frosty in places this morning or not frosty in places? <laughs> our, our nine o'clock producer just texted me uh, and she said, we forgot to turn the heat on last night. Oh, oh that yeah, that's a up. mistake. Ha, ah, that's going to be a that's like camping when you're when it's that cold. Anyway, uh, beautiful clear skies out there and yep, it is definitely just an ice box and my map wasn't changing for some reason. Come on, map. Come on. Come on, map. Changing yours? Let me try this again here. Come on, map. Let me do the there we go. Okay. Yeah, it's they see the even the computer is cold this morning. Uh, 30 here in town, 24 Ball Verde, 22 in comfort. Kerrville right now at 21 degrees. Oh my goodness gracious. And then factor in the wind chill and you've got 23 here in town is what it feels like. Just a little bit of a breeze about uh, five, six miles per hour, but doesn't take much with these cold temperatures. And we, well, first of all, have low amounts of everything out there as far as the allergens are concerned. We are gonna see a huge warm up today relatively speaking, but that's not going to get us mm, all that warm later on. 28 degrees, I think we'll bottom out at, uh, which will be almost one degree away from the coldest we've hit so far this uh, this season, and then 58 for a high temperature. So yeah, we gained 30, but that only gets us up to 58. Another cold morning, not quite as cold tomorrow, and then we begin the warming trend going into the weekend. Beautiful again today, but just bundle up, warm up the car as well. Speaking of which, time saver traffic, here is Officer Nick Salise. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Thursday morning. All right, we're working on one accident right now near UTSA Boulevard and uh, Babcock Road. Looks like a one vehicle accident. SAPD is on scene. Hopefully we'll get that one cleared up very, very soon. All right, Trans Guy 10 and Callahan. No cars on the road right now. That's looking great there. I-10 in Frio inbounds and outbounds. It's looking even better. Very little traffic there. And 10 events Jackson to see a, a unit there. Maybe it's just a traffic stop, but other than that, traffic is looking great right now. Hope you're having a good morning. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. Firefighters were able to save part of a taqueria on the northwest side after a fire last night. The Mexican restaurant is located off Loop 1604 near Babcock. Sarah Costa is live at the restaurant. So what's the damage, Sarah? Well, you could definitely see it just driving by the restaurant. It's in the back part. You can see this back refrigerated refrigeration park is been completely just charred up and this is where most of that fire was located that broke out last night. But let me show you the video from last night as crews work to knock down the fire here at Taqueria Aguas, Aguas Calientes. Firefighters with the San Antonio Fire Department responding to the call around 940 last night to the restaurant in the 15,000 block of White Fawn, which is off of Loop 1604. Firefighters say they arrived to heavy flames coming from an add on refrigeration structure for the restaurant. Crews were able to stop the fire at the add on structure from spreading into the main part of the building. There is not a damage estimate at this time. An arson has been called out to investigate the cause of the fire. As for when the restaurant will reopen, if they're going to be open this morning for breakfast, that is not known because the food inspector needs to come out and they'll go the ones that are going to be making that call. Live from the Northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Happening today, Julian Castro and Democratic presidential candidate Senator Elizabeth Warren will be here in San Antonio. They'll be at Sunset Station Lone Star Pavilion at 430 in the afternoon. The town hall will begin at 630 p.m. We will be there to bring you the latest right here on KSAT 12.
In your morning headlines, a cluster of coronavirus continues to pop up around the globe. The United States grappling with how to prepare for an outbreak on American soil. CDC officials confirmed last night that a patient in California contracted the coronavirus. The California diagnosis brings the number of infected Americans to 60. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. As clusters of coronavirus continue to spread around the globe, here at home, the United States is wrestling with how to prepare for an outbreak on American soil. And the number one priority from our standpoint is the health and safety of the American people. And now the Centers for Disease Control confirming a patient in California contracted coronavirus with no known travel or exposure to another infected patient, believed to be the first such case in the U.S. The president, alongside his top health advisors, trying to reassure the country, but downplaying the danger Wednesday. He tapped Vice President Mike Pence to lead the U.S. response to the virus while asking Congress for at least $2.5 billion to stop the spread. We've been working with... Uh, the Hill very, very carefully, very strongly, and I think we have very good bipartisan spirit for money. Democrats and even some Republicans say it's not enough. And what he's doing is late, too late, anemic. Hopefully we can make up for the loss of time. Airports around the world are doing all they can to prevent and prepare. At LAX, crews disinfecting surfaces after a Korean Airlines flight attendant who worked on flights at the airport tested positive for the virus. In Korea, a U.S. soldier has come down with COVID-19, the military ordering additional screenings of all service members. And in Italy, coronavirus cases surging. While back in the U.S., health experts say not to expect a vaccine anytime soon. We can't rely on a vaccine over the next several months to a year. With that latest patient in California testing positive for the coronavirus, that brings the total number of cases here in the U.S. to 60. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. One of the 20 buildings at one of the nation's largest breweries has been cleared out after a man shot and killed five employees at the old Miller Brewing headquarters in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Authorities have identified the gunman as a 51-year-old man who worked there. Happened yesterday afternoon at a sprawling facility that has a mix of corporate offices and brewing facilities. Over a thousand people work there. Police say the gunman died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it believes a multi-state E. coli outbreak is linked to Jimmy John's. 14 people in Texas, Missouri, Illinois, Utah, and Iowa have become ill after eating clover sprouts from the sandwich chain. Health officials are asking anyone who ate sprouts at the chain before Monday to report any gastrointestinal issues to the doctor. The Food and Drug Administration recently sent a warning letter to Jimmy John's, blaming it for multiple outbreaks over the last seven years. Vice President Mike Pence, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, and White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway will be speaking today at the Conservative Political Action Conference, the summit happening at the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center in Washington, D.C. CPAC is an annual gathering of conservative activists and organizations. The president is expected to close out the conference coming up on Saturday. But it is Thursday morning. Glad you're with us. 438. 30 degrees. Ahead on GMSA, Shark Tank cast member and businesswoman Barbara Corcoran is speaking out after she was scammed. Spurs played last night here at home. We have highlights and the score coming up next. And live cam giving us a look outside. Really cold. You need your heavy coat today, everybody. I still love them. <laughs> A slow start doomed the Spurs last night. Dallas Mavericks beat the Silver and Black at the AT&T Center, the final 109-103. Drought scoring the Spurs by 16 points in the first quarter, going on a 12-0 run late in the game. Spurs shot 29% in the first and finished three points shy of their season low for scoring in the opening period. Spurs will need to start picking up some wins if they ever have a chance of extending that 22 season playoff streak this year. Next game against the Orlando Magic, Saturday, 7.30, here at home at the AT&T Center. Yeah, can't well, win them all. It's a close game. They just need to start winning them all, though, if they can. 441, 30 degrees. Is film director Steven Spielberg stepping down from the new Indiana Jones movie? Ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you all about it. Is your oven a little grimy inside? Be honest, next Maybe. on GMSA, we put some self-cleaning ovens to the test.
Welcome back. It is now 444. One of America's most savvy business women says she was scammed out of nearly $400,000. Real estate mogul Barbara Cochran is speaking out exclusively about the incident. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look. You've got to give up this crying stuff. Shark Tank star Barbara Corcoran conned out of nearly $400,000. This morning I wired $388,000 into a false bank account in Asia. It all started last week when Barbara's bookkeeper, Christine, received this email, appearing to be a routine message from Barbara's assistant, Emily, approving a $388,700.11 payment to a German company called FFH Concept. The only problem, Barbara's assistant, Emily, never sent that email. It was a con artist on the other end. I realized immediately it's something I would have fallen for if I had seen the emails. Coming at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of our interview with Barbara Corcoran. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. As you begin making your food for the day, how's your oven looking? If it's on the grimy, gross, scaly side, it's probably time to clean it. Oh, that's just a lovely thought. <laughs> Drive on your side's Marilyn Moore shows us what happened when Consumer Reports put self-cleaning ovens to the test. When is the last time you cleaned your oven? I don't. I don't clean my oven. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I don't clean my oven. I never got to that part of the instructions. If you ignore it, accumulated grime can produce smoke and smells when you bake, and the smell could transfer to the food you're making. Who wants to scrub? That's what your oven self-cleaning feature is for. Consumer Reports tested self-cleaning features on ranges. First, they concocted a messy mix of eggs, cheese, cherry pie filling, lard, tomato puree and tapioca. They painted it on and baked it for an hour. We actually call this Monster Mash and we make the test as tough as possible so that the really good cleaning ovens stand out. They found that high temperature self-clean cycles are the most effective, where the oven locks and cranks up the heat to 800 degrees or hotter, turning the mess to ash that you can easily wipe out once the oven cools. We found that the lowest scoring ranges use a different, shorter self-clean process that uses low temperatures. Our testers were able to wipe the residue from the floor of the oven, but not from the sides. Before you begin, be sure to turn on the vent hood and crack your windows and remove the racks or they may lose their finish and not glide as easily. Plan ahead too. The process can take two to six hours. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Okay, I had not heard the part about removing the racks to, uh -oh. to lose the enamel or the, the best functionality there. So that's a good thing to yeah, know. That's a good tip. Mm, that's why the enamel's missing on all the racks of your ovens. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rental. Who cares? Uh, here's uh, Officer Nick Salise with the latest on Time Saver Traffic. Nick, how's it going? It's going good, Mark. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, right now, we're still working on that one accident. Looks like, looks like it's about to get cleared up here at UTSA and Babcock Boulevard. SAPD is on the scene. Looks like they're towing that vehicle away here soon. All right, drive times. Eastbound 151 to 1604 to Highway 90, 9 minutes. And eastbound Highway 90 to 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. Good times there. All right, trans guide. 10 in Callahan looking very smooth. 281 in Hildebrand, hardly any cars out there. Um, so that's looking good as well. 35 in Evans, um, traffic is looking very light. And uh, 35 in Brooklyn is also looking great right now. So if you're on the way to work, expect a very smooth commute. Thank you very much, Officer Sleese. Yeah, no problem. Boy, this is a day you don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> yeah, it's cold out there. Yeah, so. I opened the door to let Truman out this morning. He's like, nah, yeah, no, I'm good. I'll, I'll hold it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> not happening. Yeah, definitely bundle up and we're not done cooling off as of yet. And we do have, well, first of all, it's not as windy, thank goodness, as yesterday, right? but there's still a little bit of a breeze. But those winds yesterday, you know, you knew it when you're, everything was just flying all over the place. And when the wind sock out there at the airport is just, you know, straight as an arrow, you know, it's really windy out there. At least we're going to have a lot of sunshine today like we had yesterday. So it's going to feel pretty nice, but you get in the shadows and still going to be pretty chilly out there. It's going to be a fantastic sunrise this morning and these temperatures, everybody with what two exceptions on this map, Divine and Canyon Lake right now just above freezing, but everybody else is at or below freezing and a bunch of 20s out there and we're not done as of yeah, I think we'll continue to drop down a couple of more degrees. The humidity is also, of course, you have to have dry air. 
to get temperatures that's cold and we had all we have all the ingredients in place. Clear skies, very dry air, light wind that allows the heaviest, coolest air to settle down to the surface. You can also feel how dry it is on your skin when you step outside. Wind chill temperatures 23 in town, 22 comfort in Kerrville and uh, 25 is what it feels like in Hilotus. There's not much of a breeze, but again, it doesn't take much out there. In most areas, there is very light or no wind, and so that's where we're seeing some of the coldest temperatures right now. And upstairs in the atmosphere, there is nothing as far as any moisture, so we're going to have those just intensely blue skies. And as far as obviously any clouds today, Nothing showing up on any of the uh, computer models whatsoever. Same thing tomorrow. Now, late tomorrow night, it looks like we might see a couple of high clouds starting to move on in here and maybe one or two high clouds uh, hanging around on Saturday. But otherwise, Saturday is going to be another phenomenal day. Maybe not as perfect as today and tomorrow. Then we'll see more clouds moving in here by Sunday. Obviously, most of the country right now, with the exception of the coasts, uh, down below freezing. And we are, well, every bit as cold as what it is around the Great Lakes, except they got a whole bunch of snow up there. Nothing like that around here. Anyway, as far as the forecast today, relatively speaking, yes, we're going to have a huge warm up. Bless you, Leslie. And uh, 52 degrees today at noon. Plenty of sunshine, just a little bit of a light breeze out there. So it's just enough to add that little zing to these cooler temperatures. 58 degrees. We only hit 56 yesterday. Normal high temperatures, the upper 60s. So still about 10 below normal today, but absolutely gorgeous out there. Another cold one tomorrow. Won't be as cold tomorrow but we'll still be down in the 30s. That's here in town. So out in the hill country, you're still going to see a freeze tomorrow morning. Then we get up to 68 degrees. Nice big warm up throughout the day. Chilly again on Saturday morning up to 72 and then really start to stay mild with more humidity coming on in here Sunday morning, 55 degrees up to 75. Uh, a couple of showers going to be possible, maybe even a thunderstorm Monday which would be very nice to see some rain and a couple of showers Tuesday. Another weak front moves through Wednesday just to kind of Keep temperatures in check. Okay. Thank you. Like turtleneck. Yeah. Dress for warmth. <laughs> That's Function key. over fashion this morning. Mm -hmm. Function but over fashion. fashion. But, but you're fashion. I was going to say you don't like it. Is no, that what no. you're saying? <laughs> You I too. Knew, I knew I was going to. I'm uh, going to turn this no. around and take us Basically, all home. Basically, just no, insulted no. my outfit. 451, 30 degrees. Yeah, you keep doing that. The Invisible Man hits theaters tonight. You can't see him, though. No, I'm just kidding. The social message behind the film next on GMSA. This looks creepy. In the spotlight, The Invisible Man is in theaters today. And will the next James Bond movie be the longest yet? And the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Hello? The new Invisible Man movie has a hidden layer. The film stars Elizabeth Moss as a woman trying to escape an abusive partner who keeps tormenting her even though he's presumed dead. She tells me the film is a metaphor for Believe Women, mixing a social message with thrills like some of her favorite scary movies including Poltergeist, The Shining, and The Exorcist. They're deeply scary, you know. They're fun, they're, yeah. you know, they're terrifying, they're beautiful visually, but then they do have something a little bit more to ground it in reality. The Invisible Man is in theaters tonight. <laughs> Steven Spielberg reportedly won't be going on the next Indiana Jones adventure. Spielberg has directed all four previous Indiana Jones films and was supposed to helm number five, but Variety says he's stepping back and Ford v Ferrari director James Mangold is in talks for the gig. Harrison Ford is reportedly still on board. No word if the film is still on track for a summer 2021 one release date. History is kind to men who play God. The upcoming 25th James Bond film will apparently be the longest yet. A few theater chains have listed the runtime for No Time to Die at 2 hours and 43 minutes. It's in theaters April 10th. And maybe let him sing happy birthday, but Josh Groban is celebrating today, turning 39. While JWoww, Jennifer Farley from Jersey Shore, is 34. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. Wow, no time to die at 2.43. That's too long. It better be good, and we have no uh, time to waste, do we? It's too long for me. 5.46, we're there 4.56. I transpose the numbers again. 4.56, 30 degrees. In our next half hour, we're going to hear from survivors of a drunk driving crash who are sharing their story with the jury in the intoxication manslaughter case. And Dunkin' going beyond donuts, offering customers a mix of sweet and savory with its newest bacon product. Yes, we said bacon. Everything's better with bacon. Pretty much. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, four, nine, one with a fireball of eight and daily four, zero, one, seven, five with a fireball of zero. 
And your cash five numbers 10, 13, 19, 22, 25, Lotto, Texas, 12, 35, 40, 47, 52, 53, and your Powerball numbers 8, 27, 29, 36, 47, Powerball of 24, Power Play 3. Good luck from everybody at Good Morning San Antonio. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And right now, GMSA firefighters arrived to find heavy flames at a local taqueria out by UTSA's main campus overnight. We are live with the latest details. Health officials are now reporting the first known person-to-person -person transmission of the coronavirus in the United States. And we don't have the wind, but wow, it is still mighty chilly out there right now, hovering just below the freezing mark. We'll see if those temperatures update in this hour. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is February 27th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Yeah, let's get right to Mike. You definitely need to bundle yourself and your kiddos up as you head out today. Yeah, it's nowhere near as windy as yesterday, but there is still a little bit of a breeze out there. And with temperatures this cold, that just adds that nice little bite to uh, how cold it is. Look at that. Everybody on this map is at or below freezing right now. It's 22 in Kerrville. That's the actual air temperature. And there's, like I said, the light breeze. So <laughs> wind chill readings are down there, even in the teens in some parts of our viewing area. Take a look at the numbers right now. Divine is still at 36. Wow, it's still hot there in Divine and Canyon Lake. <laughs> Anyway, uh, like I said, 22 Kerrville and uh, Comfort. And then the wind chill right now in Hondo is at 15, 26 in town. 18 is what it feels like at Randolph. And the temperature 31 degrees. We were 30 last hour out there at the airport. And for some reason, still shaking my head on that one, that did go up one degree. But I think we'll continue to drop down maybe a couple of notches in the next uh, few hours. Everything as far as the allergens are on the low side this morning. And yeah, clear, cold, sunny, chilly, beautiful, big warm up. We gained 30 degrees throughout the day, but do the math that only puts us into the upper 50s. Basically, I think we're going to be starting off or dropping down into the upper 20s tomorrow. Cold start. Sunny, a bit warmer, up into normal range, upper 60s, because we stay about 10 below that uh, today. And then over the weekend, warmer temperatures and increasing clouds as the weekend rolls on. But overall, another very nice looking weekend. Just bundle up and warm up your car this morning. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on? Not much, Mike. It looks like they, that UTSA accident at Babcock is about cleared up now. So good news there. Things are looking good. Hope you're everyone out there is having a great Thursday morning. Oh, all right. Drive time 1604 westbound from US 281 to I 10 six minutes. And uh, if you're on 281 southbound from Bolverde to 1604 six minutes, so still really good uh, times um, there. All right, 35 in Topper Wine. Things are looking good. Not too much. A little traffic's light to moderate, but still great. 37 at Houston. One, two, three cars on the road. Not bad there. And let's do one more. 10 in Callahan is looking good. And 1604 in Valley Meadow looking very light. So we're off to a good start this Thursday morning. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Nick. A fire at a northwest side taqueria has caused the restaurant to be closed until deemed safe. Taqueria Aguas Calientes is off 1604 in Babcock, right behind popular Hills and Dales Bar. Sarah Costa live at the restaurant. Sarah, this fire mainly to the back of the building, we understand? Yeah, and that's what we're looking at right now. You can see this back structure, which is known, uh, which is used as a refrigeration structure, is all charred up. But that's where most of the fire was contained. To you can see some of that char and debris and some of that water damage through that insulation. But I want to show you the video from earlier uh, last night where that fire broke out around 940 last night. Firefighters with the San Antonio Fire Department responding to the call around 940 last night to the restaurant in the 15,000 block of White Fawn off of Loop 1604. Firefighters say they arrived to heavy flames coming from an add on refrigeration structure to the restaurant. Crews were able to stop the fire at the add on from spreading into the main building. There is not a damage estimate at this time and arson has been called out to investigate the cause of this fire and whether or not the restaurant will be open this morning for breakfast or open at all today, that is unknown at this time because the food inspector has to come out and they have to deem it safe to open with all the smoke damage um, that may have gotten into the back part of the building. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie.
Thank you, Sarah. The only person involved in a drunk driving wreck that wasn't drinking in one August night was killed. Mario Velasquez was the designated driver as he and four friends were leaving the Northwest Side Bar when they were hit broadside by an SUV. Its driver, Rosalinda Olada, were, is on trial facing intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault charges. Paul Venema was there as survivors of the crash shared their story with the jury. This is how a night out ended for the people in that white sedan. It began with visits to a couple of bars. I remember we were all just talking. Um, we were laughing, listening to the music. As they pulled from a parking lot to exit onto Loop 1604, their car was struck broadside by an SUV driven by 24-year-old Rosalinda Olalde. She's on trial accused of driving drunk. Her SUV veered from the access road onto the sidewalk, striking the car in which Murillo was a passenger. 22-year-old Mario Velasquez, the designated driver, was killed in the crash. I remember waking up and I was sitting right here on the side, like in the ditch. Murillo and Luis Aguilar, who was a front seat passenger in the car, were both injured in the crash. I just feel like a huge impact. Um, and then I feel myself, I guess, going out of consciousness, but still conscious. Um, and then the rest, I remember just waking up. He managed to get to the car and check on Velasquez. Something in me, I just knew he, was, he wasn't there. Paramedics tried to revive Velasquez. We decided to continue with the CPR and try to hopefully stabilize him and prevent him from going into full cardiac arrest. Krucek said they continued those life-saving efforts for nearly half an hour. But just after 2.30 that morning, Velasquez was pronounced dead at the scene. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. In California, health officials are now reporting the first known person-to-person -person transmission of the coronavirus in the United States. The patient is being treated in Sacramento. The person was not exposed to the virus through traveling or through contact with someone who was known to be infected. Doctors say given the close social and business relationships China has with California, it's not unexpected that the first U.S. case would be in that state. And right now on KSAT.com, we've posted an interactive dashboard showing real-time data of confirmed cases and deaths related to the coronavirus. Johns Hopkins University Center for Systems Science and Engineering created the map, which provides the most accurate international tracking of the outbreak. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos scheduled to appear before a congressional committee today to answer questions about the Trump administration's 2021 budget. According to the Washington Post, the proposed education budget calls for the effective elimination of the federal charter schools program. It would instead be lumped in with other education department programs. Seven minutes after the hour, 31 degrees. One major airline looking to revolutionize your travel experience with your very own bed on board. And move over donuts. Duncan now ready to serve you a bag of bacon. We're going to tell you about this new menu item. And live cam giving us a look outside. Really cold out there this morning. Heavy coat time, everybody. Welcome back. It's 11 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, your next pair of kicks might have the grip of a rain tire. Skechers has partnered with the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company to use its rubber technology in shoes. The shoe company says it will provide better stability for runners and excellent grip on slippery surfaces. The Goodyear Performance outsoles are already available on an assortment of walking and running shoes. Other footwear categories from Skechers, like trail and work shoes, will be incorporating the Goodyear rubber later on this year. No one likes fingerprints on their shiny new car, but Porsche is challenging this with their new sports car. The German automaker says if you buy one of its new 2020 Porsche 911 models, you can add your fingerprints to your new car's paint job. Porsche touts that it's uh, designed a new method to print fingerprints directly onto the car's hood. A custom design will be available starting in March, but it's not free. It'll cost more than $8,100. Oh, by the way, look at the imagery here. That's, that's what it looks like. Uh, this is, of course, all on top of the car's hefty price tag. The starting price for the cheapest Porsche 911 model, the Carrera, comes in at $97,000, but they are considered classic sports cars before they even roll off the assembly line. Well, and if you can afford a $91,000 car, you probably can afford the $8,100 fingerprint. fingerprint. 
Hey, Dunkin' is going for a mix of sweet and savory with its newest product. The Donut Chain is now selling bags of bacon. Winning! The item is called Snack and Bacon on the menu. It's a bag of eight half slices of the pork product with sweet black pepper seasoning. Dunkin' says it's for customers on the go who are craving a different kind of snack. The new Snack and Bacon is available in restaurants nationwide. I'd try that one. For sure. Oh. My bacon. Oh my goodness. 512 right now, 31 degrees. Still ahead, this year's Billboard Music Show should be especially memorable for country music legend Garth Brooks. We'll tell you why. And next, Microsoft, the latest company whose bottom line is being affected by coronavirus, what that means for customers. The following is a list of snow day closings due to inclement weather. All two-wheel drive crossovers should close for the day. Wannabe SUVs should close for the day. Regular four-door sedans should close for the foreseeable future. All cheap 4x4 vehicles will remain open despite the harsh weather conditions. Now purchase and get $2,000 bonus cash or well-qualified lessees can lease the 2019 Jeep Wrangler for $281 a month. Want your brain better? Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nareva has clinically proven ingredients that fuel five indicators of brain performance. Memory, focus, accuracy, learning, and concentration. Try Nareva for 30 days and see the difference. Home Advisor is hands down the easiest way to do all sorts of home projects, like fixing a leak or painting a wall. Or mounting a TV. <laughs> Straighten it all. Every project's easy with Home Advisor. Your time now is 516. Microsoft is the latest company to sound the alarm about supply problems because of the coronavirus outbreak. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Kimberly Brooks have details in your Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Microsoft is warning about the effect of the coronavirus. The company says the outbreak in China is hurting its supply chain more than expected. Because of that, Microsoft is warning investors that upcoming revenue expectations will not be met. That could hurt Microsoft shares today. Based on sales, a new study finds the iPhone XR is the most popular smartphone. Trackers say Apple shipped just over 46 million XR units last year. That's more than double from the year before. And they say the iPhone 11 is second most popular. And and one airline wants to give its economy customers a chance to rest well on long flights. Air New Zealand is developing sleeping pods for coach. They're more like bunk beds. Each pod can sleep six, but you'll have to pay an extra fee and they could be available by next year. I've always wanted this without the first class ticket. <laughs> Those are your tech bites. Have a great day, guys. It's Thursday. It's time for Best of Behind the Kitchen Door. Perfect restaurant scores from around the San Antonio metropolitan area. And these are from Metro Health. In the last 30 days, we have Whataburger at 9263 North Loop 1604 West. We also have Chipotle at 1201 North Loop 1604 West. A couple of different ones out there. Camacho's Mexican Restaurant at 5895 Babcock Road. We also have on our list Perfect Scores Los Jalapenos Mexican Restaurant, 6387 Babcock. And then we also have Earth Burger, 2501 Nacogdoches Road on San Antonio's northeast side. If your place got a perfect score, let us know about it. You can send us an email. Very easy to do. That would be for BKD, as in behind the kitchen door, at ksat.com. I have more perfect scores coming up in our six o'clock hour. Love those perfect scores. Let's find out how um, traffic is rating today. Yeah, just working on one accident currently. It's on Wurzbach Parkway and Thousand Oaks Drive. Now this accident just came out right now, so I don't know if it's westbound or eastbound. I'll get that to you as soon as I can. Just please be careful on Wurzbach Parkway. It is a very dangerous parkway with windy roads. Please control your speeds when you're up there. All right, drive times. If you're, east, if you're on I-10 eastbound from FM 46 to 1604, 37 minutes. And if you're on I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 13 minutes. So good times there. All right, Trans Guy, 37 at Houston, looking really good right now. Uh, not too much traffic going out there. 410 at Callahan Road, looking great. 1604 in Valley Meadow, light traffic. 281 in Hildebrand, looking very good. And uh, let's see, let's do one more here. We got 35 at Evans. Traffic starting to pick up a little bit, but still looking smooth. Thank you, Nick. Boy, bundle up, folks, once again out there. But again, the saving grace, we don't have those gusty winds. But a little bit. I mean, it's just that puff, and it's like, ooh. Yeah, it's a yeah. heat up your car before you get in that kind of day. 
Yes, indeed. And take a look at this picture. I love Mr. Olson is one of our oh, regulars I like when it that. comes to ASAT Connect Pictures. And boy, it's a great, great shot. Egyptian geese. Never seen those before. Hmm. You guys? I haven't either. And by the way, I know a lot of folks, uh, you know, used to send pictures in on KSAT Connect. And you have to, it used to have its own app. You have to use the updated and, and re-up or re-download or update the, uh, the KSAT weather app. And right at the bottom of it, there's a place where it says you can post the pictures. And that gets you to posting pictures on this. So thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. And boy, it's beautiful out there. We have clear skies. And it's going to be a spectacular sunrise. But look at these temperatures. Everybody on this map is below freezing. For some reason, we went up a degree in the past hour, only from 30. but and the dew point temperatures are bone dry, so you can actually feel how dry the air is out there. Wind chill, 26 in town. Feels like 21 in Balverde, Port SA. There's a little bit of a breeze, not much, but again, just enough to uh, add that little bite to those temperatures. And as far as the humidity, it stays extremely low throughout the rest of today. We keep basically a uh, north to northwesterly, westerly flow uh, in the atmosphere, and we're going to continue with the dry air. Now, dew points will creep up a little bit, but I mean, we're still seeing dry air around here, so that's still going to allow temperatures to get very cold tomorrow. Not quite as cold as this morning, but I think we'll still see some freezing temperatures in parts of the hill country tomorrow. Then as we go into Saturday, again, it's going to be another fantastic day, but there's going to be more moisture coming back on in here, and it's really going to come back in by Sunday and that's going to lead to more clouds. There's nothing upstairs in the atmosphere. I mean, bone dry air. This is the water vapor imagery, and so therefore we're going to have some beautiful blue skies today and not a cloud in the sky either. Uh, that's going to be the situation all day long today, all day long tomorrow, and then we go into late tomorrow night and Saturday. Uh, a couple of May, you know, high clouds kind of moving on in here, so maybe one or two extra clouds hanging around on Saturday. But still, like I said, a beautiful day and it's going to be much warmer. We after a cold start tomorrow morning, then we're going to warm up in the afternoon and then continue that warming process into the weekend. So today, 52 degrees at noon, sunny skies out there. Beautiful, but keep a coat handy. And despite the sunshine, you want to keep a coat, even though we're going to be in the upper 50s. So a little bit warmer than yesterday. It's still about 10 degrees below normal later on today. Tomorrow, we drop down to the mid 30s. So again, it's going to be another really cold one. Normal low temperatures right around mid 40s. And then we get up into the uh, upper 60s and 72 on Saturday after another chilly start. And then with the humidity coming back in here, we stay in the mid 50s Sunday morning. Plenty of clouds around. Shower, maybe a storm on Monday. A couple of showers Tuesday. Another front's going to move through the middle of next week. Nowhere near as strong, more like a Pacific run, just to hold temperatures kind of in check. Do we change the clocks pretty soon? Yeah, it's coming up. No, Not it's this weekend. It's the following weekend on Sunday. To my, it? it's yeah. I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's coming up real soon. Yeah, it's like March. Sunday, March eighth or something like that. I'll double check, but I'm. It's that soon, buddy. Yeah, I read something about that. I'm so sorry, guys. Hi, Ariana. Really? You had to bring that up, huh? Sorry, I have to remind people. Ariana, or the time change. <laughs> no, the time change. <laughs> Poor Ariana. <laughs> now, she's like, I just got here. Our 9 a.m. producer. She's right over there. She's adorable. Anyway, 522, 31 degrees. Up next, the newest Indiana Jones film is facing a big change at the top. We'll explain. 525, the latest Indiana Jones film is still going forward. But there's going to be a major change. CNN's David Daniel explains in your Hollywood Minute. Steven Spielberg directed 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark and the three Indiana Jones sequels that followed. But according to Variety, Spielberg will not be at the helm of Indiana Jones 5, though he will stay on the project as a producer. No word whether changing directors will affect the film's latest announced release date of July 9th, 2021. Name? Bond. James Bond. No Time to Die will take its time unfolding on the big screen. Two cinema chains list the running time of Daniel Craig's final Bond film at 2 hours and 43 minutes. That would make it the longest Bond movie ever, 15 minutes longer than the previous record holder, Spectre.
Garth Brooks has won 19 Billboard Music Awards, but this year's show should be especially memorable for the singer-songwriter. Brooks is set to receive this year's Icon Award, honoring his chart-topping career. He'll also perform on the show, scheduled for April 29th in Las Vegas. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And don't forget the 007 villain this time is Bohemian Rhapsody's Rami Malek. Ooh, I loved him in Bohemian Rhapsody. He's, he's a great actor. 527 right now, 31 degrees. In our next half hour, there's at least five dozen cases of the coronavirus in the United States. What the president is saying about the U.S. government's fight against the disease. And several new Army recruits treated to a special ceremony never done before by the U.S. military. And even after the sun goes down, one local restaurant chain is getting the breakfast tacos ready for another big day. We're going to show you what goes on while you were sleeping at Las Palapas. Hey there, good morning. Hope you slept well. It is Thursday. It is February 27th. We had those howling winds to deal with yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. This morning, not so much, and the roadways are dry, so hopefully it's a smooth commute. Yeah, things are looking great right now. We're just dealing with one accident on Thousand Oaks and Wurzbach Parkway. Other than that, things are great. If you're waking up at places like Kerrville or Comfort this morning, <laughs> oh, oh, oh man, Gold hopefully the furnace is on because it feels like... It feels like it's down in the, well, there's no wind really out there. Right. It's just in the low 20s. But in parts of the area around uh, Hondo, um, even around Randolph, temperatures, uh, wind chill readings are down in the teens right now. Oh, oh my, it's my, cold. Oh, my goodness. Great sleeping weather. It's cold. And I know. I'm, I'm sleep anchoring right now. <laughs> you are? Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't, don't wake me. Don't wake her up. Uh, <laughs> she's like a sleepwalker. If you wake her up right now. In trouble. All heck's going to break loose. <laughs> People could say that a lot about, about a lot of anchors. Anyway, uh, I think we'll drop down a couple of degrees in the next few hours. And then we'll make it up to 58 later on today. Big warm-up. Who's he talking about? Oh. Not, well, oh, present, present company excluded. Accepted. Yeah, yeah, accepted? accepted. <laughs> Except, yeah, the exception. Oh. Anyway, excluded. Hey, we're going to make it up to 58 later on today. Uh, please Are roll you that sleep beautiful anchoring beam footage. Too? What? Nothing. Anyway, take a look outside right now. <laughs> Help me, director. Uh, there we see on the uh, live cam, nothing but clear skies out there. It's going to be an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise this morning. And yeah, once again, out there, Kerrville Comfort, 22 degrees, Tarpley at 21 and 31 out there at the airport. Balverde is at 20 degrees right now. And then there's that wind chill, Hondo 15, 18 right now at Randolph. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> just, I mean, you step outside, it's just like, oh my goodness gracious. Anyway, mold, hackberry, and oak, as well as juniper, are all on the low side. The updated pollen count is going to be coming out in about uh, an hour and a half or so. Now, the cold morning tomorrow, not quite as cold. Then we start the warm up into the weekend. Big question is there any rain out there? We could use some details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Yeah, quiet so far, Nick. It's quiet. I'm glad. It's just a nice cold morning and traffic is flowing smoothly right now. We just have one accident. It's not on Wurzbach Parkway how, like I thought initially. It looks like it's on Thousand Oaks at Wurzbach Parkway right there. So not too bad. Still be careful when you're heading that way. It looks like a two uh, vehicle accident. Their officers are on scene. All right, here we go. We have some drive times. If you're on 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown 12 minutes, and if you're on 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown 12 minutes, so things are still looking really good and smooth. All right, trans guy, 10 at Frio, inbounds and outbounds. Things are looking great right now. 10 in Vance Jackson. Traffic's starting to pick up a little bit over there. Not too bad, though. Still expect a smooth commute if you're on the way to work. And 410 in Broadway on the northeast side looking great as well. Well, I hope you are having a great start to your Thursday morning. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, officials say no charges are expected to be filed after a deadly crash on the north side last night. It happened around 7.30 at US 281 in Wurzbach Parkway. San Antonio police say a man in his 60s is dead after he was hit by an SUV while trying to cross the road. Police say the driver of the vehicle claimed they didn't see the man, but they did stop and tried to help after hitting him. Happening today, Julian Castro and Democratic presidential candidate Senator Elizabeth Warren will be here in San Antonio for a town hall meeting. They'll be at Sunset Station, Lone Star Pavilion at 430 this afternoon. The town hall starts at 630. We will be there to bring the latest right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. 533, there are now at least 60, 60 confirmed cases of coronavirus right here in the United States. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, health officials expect that number will keep rising in the U.S. as well as around the globe. 
The U.S. may have its first community spread coronavirus case. That means the illness could be moving through a community and the source of the infection is unknown. In this case, health officials say the patient tested positive despite not having relevant travel history or exposure to another known patient. The UC Davis Medical Center says the patient, a California resident, is under airborne and strict contact precautions. This is not a time for partisanship. Uh, pathogens do not respect party lines, and it's very important for all of us to come together and to work together to make sure that we're prepared. On Wednesday, President Trump announced Vice President Pence would lead the U.S. government's fight against the disease. We will continue to bring the full resources of the federal government in coordination with our state and local partners. And the CDC says it's considering expanding health screenings at airports. Luckily, most of the people, eight out of 10 people who get this infection are gonna have no or minimal symptoms. Those symptoms are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. As for how to try to protect yourself. Washing your hands for 20 seconds. Most people do it less than five to 10, uh, including not touching your face, not touching your eyes if you haven't washed your hands recently. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. Here at home, several school districts have already sent notices to parents about combating the spread of the virus. Harlandale ISD, East Central ISD, Northside, Northeast, and Shirt Cibolo Universal City ISD, among those that have informed parents that hand washing is a big part of their plan. It's after the CDC's urging of uh, communities and schools to prepare for a possible spread. Schools continue to work with local and state health officials in the response. It's expected that a federal judge today will set a trial date for actress Lori Loughlin and her fashion designer husband. They face conspiracy and honest services mail fraud charges as part of the college admissions bribery scandal. Yesterday, lawyers for the couple said new evidence shows they are innocent. In Houston, a police chase ended with an arrest thanks to a motorist who decided to lend a hand. Jose Cruz driving his glass installation truck when he saw a car being followed by a convoy of officers. Cruz decided the best thing to do was use his truck to help trap the vehicle. Cruz's vehicle was slightly damaged when the suspect's car crashed into his taillight. He says his boss isn't too worried about it. 536, 31 degrees. Still had the military treats new army recruits with a special ceremony that was out of this world. Whether it's for a midnight snack or a 4 a.m. taco, the staff here is always ready to satisfy those cravings. Hunger hits hardest here right around 2 a.m. The overnight staff at this north side Las Palapas is used to feeding the after club crowd. With the hours they work, they say it can be tough to tell day from night. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I found out that their customers, though, have one particular daytime in mind. I'll show you what they think is the most important meal of the night in this week's While You Were Sleeping. And outside with live cam, the main weather headline this morning is bundle up yet again. Temperatures at or below freezing in a good portion of the San Antonio metropolitan area. You're watching GMSA. Well, even after the sun goes down, breakfast tacos are on the menu for one local restaurant chain. In fact, any time is the right time for breakfast, lunch, or dinner at Las Palapas. Katrina Weber spent some time in one of their 24-hour kitchens. She shows us how they filled the middle-of-the-night cravings in this week's While You Were Sleeping. The heat is on in the kitchen. Even the drive through is a hot spot. But things are only warming up at this Las Palapas. At just after midnight, this restaurant's big overnight rush is still about two hours away. I got you. After 2 o'clock, 2.30, when local bars get over, uh, get out, you know, they'll, they'll step in. After two years on this shift, manager Jesus Gomez knows the routine well. This Northside location near Highway 281 and Loop 1604 often draws an after club crowd looking for late night munchies and his staff has to be ready. Anywhere from 100 to 150 tacos on the weekends, I would say a bit, a bit more. You'd be surprised how many people are out and about. Getting a chance to sit down like this isn't something Oscar Estevez often gets to do. He's usually on his feet. Hey, how are you Good, how are you? Table side during his sometimes 12 hour long shifts. I do very well in this shift, yeah. very well. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody knows me and they're very generous. Still, he says his life is upside down. He sleeps in the daytime and stays awake all night long. 
But that allows this loyal waiter to be here for customers who may be just like him. On this shift, it can be tough to tell where night ends and morning begins, but the staff says for overnight customers, it's always the same time, breakfast time. We do get some dinner plates, but breakfast tacos, water to rehydrate. <laughs> they provide fuel to help some recover and others to keep going. Go. All while many people are still only dreaming about tacos. <laughs> Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, we weren't already oh, hungry. Oh, now I'm dreaming about tacos. <laughs> There's worse things to dream about. I guess so. Go get me a taco, please. Uh, Okay, I'll do what I can. <laughs> no, because if I leave this chair again in the middle of the newscast, it's going to make stupid headlines. 542, <laughs> 31 degrees. Up next, for all you coffee lovers out there, Panera Bread is starting a coffee subscription program. You're going to want to know about it. I can beer of my mouth right now. <laughs> Um, he's not shy and, and quite. <laughs> anyway, you're going to meet this guy coming up. Um, hello, hi, I'm um, Good Morning San Antonio. Oh, um, yes, hi, you're virtual. Okay. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Are you just a. You're just, okay. Did somebody give you coffee this morning? Look at that tongue going nuts. By the way, Olivia's here. <laughs> That's alive. It is puppy time. Who is this guy? This is Burr. Burr, Burr is a four month old Border Collie mix. Boy, he's all a four months old. Oh, yes. He's a big boy. Border Collie mix? Yes. That counts for the long legs. Yes, hi, how are you? And being a Border Collie mix, you know he is going to be just smart as a whip. And he is. Probably going to take, I mean, a lot of attention, mm -hmm. but great <laughs> jogging partner, great to play in the backyard with the kids. And he has a sister so that oh. he loves to play with. Her name is Flowers. So he is good with other dogs. He's been out in public and is just the kindest, the kindest little pup. But you're just all... I was asking for it. So yes, you're <laughs> and it's foster boy. so that he loves to cuddle. So whenever he, whenever they're at home, we'll like to sit on the couch with her and just he just wants to be near you and give you lots of love. <laughs> Once he's done kissing, so yes, <laughs> big kisser here. So what you got going on? <laughs> so today, come and join us for brunch at Snooze on Hebner. We're going to be out with some uh, pups that are available for adoption, just like this guy right here from nine to eleven. Yeah. So come and join us and help you know, support our life-saving mission. And it's also adoption, National Adoption Weekend at PetSmart. Oh, okay. So at PetSmart off of Four Winds, we are going to have so many dogs and cats who are looking for their forever families. And that's for a donation of your choice. The minimum donation is $10. Um, so if you're looking to adopt, now is the time. Okay. And you are just, okay, ready? <laughs> Go to sleep. Good dog, go to sleep. Shh. Okay. Yeah, he is just as sweet as can be. Yes, indeed, you are. And for more information on the adopting event they have going on or this little guy, just head on over to their website, SanAntonioPetsAlive.org. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you. What a sweetie. Well, Panera Bread has a treat for Java junkies. It's unveiled a new nationwide coffee subscription program that offers unlimited hot or iced coffee. The price tag on the monthly subscription, $8.99. The unlimited access to coffee is available at all hours and for any size cup. Those interested first have to become a member of Panera's few loyalty program, My Panera. Panera tested the program in four cities for a three-month period and saw a large increase in customer visits and food sales. More than 1,000 recruits have just sworn to dedicate themselves to service for our country in a special ceremony in Houston and around the country. And leading the charge was a soldier whose service has taken him flying through the stars. NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan was floating 250 miles above Earth on the International Space Station when he officially recognized the new recruits. It's really a great honor for me to administer the oaths of enlistment today from this magnificent spaceship. This was the first time the Army has ever done this. It wasn't just for the 25 recruits at Space Center Houston. More than 1,000 took part in 150 locations across the country. Pretty cool stuff. Very and cool. thank you for your upcoming yeah. service. Yes. Let's check on the roadways. Nick, any new accidents to report? No new accidents, Leslie. Things are looking great right now all throughout the city. Uh, everything, just uh, that accident on Thousand Oaks and Wurzbach Parkway just cleared up as well. So right now, things are looking smooth if you're on the way to work, which is good news, huh? All right, let's take a look at the Trans Guide. 10 in Callahan, that's looking really good right now. We got 10 in Frio, that's looking great in Mountain Outbounds. 
Uh, let's see what else we have. 1604 Calabria in the Alamo Ranch area. We all know that 151 flyover gets pretty packed up in the next 30 minutes. And for Tenant Broadway, looking smooth. So not really warming up yet at all. No, mm -hmm. it's well, it was 30 last time I looked, so now it's 31. Okay. Where's that? <laughs> a little bit of warm. Okay. <laughs> no, you won't start warming up until between about, uh, say, 7, 8 o'clock once the sun comes up a little bit higher because usually on a day like this when you have clear skies, dry air, light wind, coldest time of the morning is right as the sun is coming up before it can start heating things up. What a great looking picture. You're right. You said we would have days of some pretty nice sunsets and sunrises. Yeah, sunrise this morning is going to be just spectacular and this afternoon. I love that. Water so tranquil looking out there from your back deck. Nice place to have. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And we're not seeing the glow as of yet. Maybe in about the next uh, 15, 20, 25 minutes or so, we should start to see the glow of the sunrise comes up. Uh, just uh, before, just after 7 o'clock this morning, pardon me. 31 degrees here in town, 20 in Balverde, Tarpley, 22 Kerrville and Comfort. And then there is a little bit of a wind chill to deal with, of course. 26 here in town, 18 Randolph, 15 in Hondo. It's not much of a breeze out there, nothing like what we had yesterday. As a matter of fact, most areas, there is no wind. The air is calm, but we've got that slight breeze there in Hondo, 7 miles per hour. It doesn't take much when you have these cold temperatures out there. And not only do we have bone dry air down here at the surface, you can just kind of feel how dry it is on your skin, but also upstairs in the atmosphere, there's nothing showing up in the water vapor imagery, which means we're going to have some beautiful blue skies out there. And clouds? Forget about it. Nothing today. Nothing but uh, sunshine. And we'll have the same thing tomorrow. Again, good sunset, good sunrise. And uh, we'll go through it again, even on into the weekend. But we'll have a couple of clouds, I think, late tomorrow night, as well as Saturday. A few of them uh, kind of scattered about here and there. And then more clouds, especially Saturday night into Sunday. Of course, most of the country right now, this latest blast of Arctic air is covering a uh, good chunk of the, the country, a good chunk of the country is below freezing as of right now, except the coasts, as you would imagine. So we've got this huge trough up here in the Great Lakes and southern Canada, and that's the one that had those storm systems moving on through that dumped all the snow up there. Now we've got this nice northwesterly flow aloft in the atmosphere, and when you have that, we just have really, really nice weather. Pulls in that dry air upstairs in the atmosphere and everything. That's why we've had such a great stretch, and it goes through about Saturday. Then we start to see more moisture coming in, especially upstairs in in the atmosphere and so a few more clouds around here and especially on Sunday going into Monday and that system is going to take shape throwing a lot more moisture in some disturbances. We do have a chance for a couple of showers, even a thunderstorm on Monday, maybe lingering into Tuesday. Then the next front moves on through here. This is looks like it's going to be more Pacific in nature, so it'll just kind of hold temperatures in check. We'll make it up to about the mid 70s to start off next week and then just back down to roughly normal readings by midweek. 52 degrees today at noon, sunny skies and then a high temperature today. Looking at the low, we gain about 25 to 30 degrees, but that only gets us into the upper 50s and it's going to be jacket weather all day long, especially if you're in the shadows. Cold again tomorrow, not quite as cold, still some freezing readings in parts of the hill country up to 68 then in the afternoon. Cold start Saturday, beautiful afternoon, a few more clouds hanging around here on Saturday. Lots of clouds on Sunday, a couple of showers, maybe even a thunderstorm Monday and again getting up into the uh, mid and upper 70s. And then we are going to be seeing readings get back down to about normal by the middle of the week. Normal's nice occasionally. Mm, we Thanks. wouldn't know that. <laughs> right now it's 552, 31 degrees. Up next, more on a special ceremony for an owl who was injured in a California wildfire and nursed back to health. Here are your lottery numbers, including Powerball. Pick three numbers, 491, Fireball 8. Daily four numbers, 0175, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 10, 13, 19, 22, 25. Lotto 12, 35, 40, 47, 52, 53. And Powerball 8, 27, 29, 36, 47, 24 is the Powerball with a power play of three. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're tracking the major development overnight in the fight against coronavirus. The first case here in the U.S. of unknown origin, the patient with no link to foreign travel. Dr. Ashton is here with what you should know to protect you and your family. You'll see it right here on GMA.
A very slow start doomed the Spurs last night. Dallas Mavericks beat the Silver and Black at the AT&T Center. The final 109-103 after outscoring the Spurs by 16 points in the first quarter. And then going on a 12-0 run late in the game. Spurs don't play again until Saturday when they host the Orlando Magic. Spurs will need to start getting some wins together if they have a chance to extend their 22-season playoff streak this year. Tip-off for Saturday's game scheduled for 7.30 over at the AT&T Center. When Al, injured in a California wildfire, is flying again. Meet Ram. He was released back in the wild Wednesday. Ventura County fire crews found him while fighting a wildfire last year. They say he suffered from a broken bone and smoke inhalation and was walking around injured and confused. Animal Rescue slowly nursed him back to health. Yesterday, the firefighters and the rehab crew were there to return Ram to his natural habitat. And he's gone. Right now we're at about three till in our next half hour of GMSA representatives from former President Barack Obama demanding a Republican super PAC stop airing an ad. We'll tell you why. And trans guide right now. See how things are looking out there as Officer Nick Solis is standing by with a live update. There's 281 at Hildebrand. You are watching GMSA on KSAT 12 live on this Thursday morning. Glad you're with us. We'll be right back. Takaria behind Hills and Dales Ice House on the northwest side closed until deemed safe after. Sorry. Okay, that <laughs> didn't go as planned. Uh, anyway, a man is in police custody this morning facing charges for driving drunk and crashing into an off duty police officer. What we'll have the condition of that officer? Live cam giving us a peek outside. You will need a turtleneck, a coat, hat, gloves. Warm up the seat in the car before you get in it. It's just downright cold. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Ah, live television. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is February 27th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. It is really cold out there. Yesterday we had the wind to deal with. Today, not as much wind, but the temperature is definitely cold. So blow freezing out at San Antonio International at last check and Oh, the hill country. Hold on to your hats and bundle up. Even Northern Bear County. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we're looking at, at 20s, low 20s around a good chunk of the area. It's going to be a fantastic sunrise. Uh, no, well, no little glow of the sunrise as of yet. And we are now back down to 30 degrees. The early readings 20 in Balverde, 20 in Tarpley, uh, 26 Randolph, 27 in New Braunfels. Everybody is just really, really darn cold out there. And then even though there's not much wind, there's enough of it. So it feels like 23 here in town. 17 is the wind chill right now at Randolph. 16 in Hondo. Needless to say, bundle up. Nice big bowl of oatmeal is going to taste really good this morning. Just get a little hot fuel in the furnace there. Everything's on the low side as far as the allergens are concerned. And temperatures, we may drop down a couple of notches in the next uh, few hours when all the official numbers come out. And then nice big warm up throughout the day, but that's kind of relative because when we have such a cold start, we're not going to get that warm today. 52 at noon, and we will continue up into the about upper 50, so just a little bit above yesterday, but still almost 10 degrees below normal. Plenty of sunshine, a spectacular looking day. Tomorrow's going to be another fantastic day. Cold in the morning, not quite as cold, and then even warmer in the afternoon. Then we begin the warming process going into the weekend. Maybe, maybe a little bit of rain way down the road. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Nick Salish, you've had a fairly quiet morning, and looking at the map, looks pretty quiet still. Yeah, still real quiet out there. Nothing going on, so that's always good news, huh, Mike? Yep. Well, right now things are looking cleared up, uh, clear all around the city. If you are on the way to work, expect a smooth commute because there are no accidents out there right now. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on 1604 eastbound from US 281 to 35, nine minutes. And if you're on 1604 westbound from I-35 to US 281, eight minutes. Great times there. Expect smooth drive to work. All right, 37 in Houston, bye. 410 in Callahan Road looking great, 1604 in Valley Meadow looking great, and 281 in Hildebrand, traffic's looking very light right now. So I hope you're having a great start to your Thursday morning and you have an even better day. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Seeing a bit of Takaria behind Hills and Dales Ice House on the northwest side is closed until it is deemed safe. A fire broke out at the Mexican restaurant last night located at 1604 and Babcock, not far from UTSA. Our Sarah Costa is at the restaurant and shows us the damage. 
Good morning, and most of that fire contained the back part of this refrigeration structure. I'm going to step out so you can see it where you see all that charred and water damage through the insulation and some debris on the ground. Now fire crews responding to this call around 940 last night. Firefighters with the San Antonio Fire Department say they arrived to heavy flames coming from an add on refrigeration structure for the restaurant. Crews were able to stop the fire at that add on structure from spreading into the main building. At this time, there is not a damage estimate and the cause of the fire is unknown. That is why arson will be out here investigating for that cause. As for if this restaurant will be open for breakfast, lunch or dinner or any time today, that is unknown at this time because the food inspector must come out and deem the restaurant safe before it can open. From the Northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Also new this morning, one man is in custody after he got into a car crash with an off-duty police officer. A police sergeant says a drunk driver crashed his, into his car, crashed his car, I should say, into two vehicles. This is at I-10 and I-35. The driver then drove off onto the street below. EMS checked the off-duty officer at the scene. He was only treated for minor injuries. He did not have to go to the hospital. Meanwhile, police arrested the driver, where he now faces DWI charges. The only person involved in a drunk driving wreck that was not drinking one August night was killed. Mario Velasquez was the designated driver as he and four friends were leaving a northwest side bar when they were broadsided by an SUV. Its driver, Rosalinda Olalde, is on trial facing intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault charges. Our Paul Venema was in court as the survivors of the crash shared their story with the jury. This is how a night out ended for the people in that white sedan. It began with visits to a couple of bars. I remember we were all just talking. Um, we were laughing, listening to the music. As they pulled from a parking lot to exit onto Loop 1604, their car was struck broadside by an SUV driven by 24-year-old Rosalinda Olalde. She's on trial, accused of driving drunk. Her SUV veered from the access road onto the sidewalk, striking the car in which Murillo was a passenger. 22-year-old Mario Velasquez, the designated driver, was killed in the crash. I remember waking up and I was sitting right here on the side, like in the ditch. Murillo and Luis Aguilar, who was a front seat passenger in the car, were both injured in the crash. I just feel like a huge impact. Um, and then I feel myself, I guess, going out of consciousness, but still conscious. Um, and then the rest, I remember just waking up. He managed to get to the car and check on Velasquez. Something in me, I just knew he, was, he wasn't there. Paramedics tried to revive Velasquez. We decided to continue with the CPR and try to hopefully stabilize him and prevent him from going into full cardiac arrest. Krujek said they continued those life-saving efforts for nearly half an hour, but just after 2.30 that morning, Velasquez was pronounced dead at the scene. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says a case of the coronavirus in California could be the first in the U.S. with no connection to traveling abroad or a known connection to another known case. The CDC says it could show that the virus is spreading in a community near Sacramento. Meanwhile, the U.S. and South Korea are postponing their annual joint military drills. That's amid concerns the virus is spreading. Around the world, the death toll in Iran increased to 22 people with 141 cases. A case has been confirmed in Brazil. Saudi Arabia is preventing Muslims from making the holy pilgrimage to Mecca during the outbreak in the Middle East. In our next half hour, we'll see how President Donald Trump and other lawmakers are responding to increasing concerns about the coronavirus. Hey, right now on KSAT.com, you can track the spread of the coronavirus in real time. Johns Hopkins University's Center for Systems Science and Engineering created a map that provides the most accurate international tracking of the outbreak of the virus. You can see the confirmed cases around the world, including right here in San Antonio, on KSAT.com. A Wisconsin community is in mourning today after a man killed five people in the latest mass shooting in America. CNN's Camilla Bernal has more from Milwaukee, where authorities are trying to piece together exactly why this happened. Active shooter, what report of one person shot at Miller Coors. An armed employee storming a Milwaukee brewing complex Wednesday, gunning down five people. We have located five additional deceased adult victims. 
The victims all worked at Molson Coors. Police say the 51-year-old man eventually turned the gun on himself. Five families, six families actually, are grieving and will be grieving because of this horrific act of this individual. More than a thousand employees were working on the sprawling campus when they began receiving texts and email alerts about an active shooter. Find a safe place, active shooter on campus. Police are on scene, remain on lockdown. Dispatch from one fire engine call the scene a war zone. Call all companies, call all companies. They do not have the shooters out. It is an additional victim. The names of the victims have not been released, nor has the motive of the shooter. We're here on the scene of uh, another American tragedy, another senseless American tragedy. And I hate to say that it's in our backyard once again. This is the 11th mass shooting in our state since 2004. In Milwaukee, I'm Camila Bernal reporting. Representatives for former President Barack Obama are demanding a Republican super PAC stop airing an ad that quotes the former president. The commercial in question uses Obama's words to imply that former pre uh, Vice President Joe Biden supports, quote, plantation politics. President Obama's lawyers say the quote comes from an audiobook and the statement was made by a barber in a completely different context more than 20 years ago. They sent a cease and desist letter demanding a group called the Committee to Defend the President stops airing the ad across the state of South Carolina. Your time now is exactly 10 minutes after 6. Temperatures are very cold, 30 degrees. Some local restaurants deserve some special recognition. Ahead on GMSA, we'll take a look at some of the places that receive perfect scores on their latest health inspections and what we call best of behind the kitchen door. Well, we all love a good H-E-B tortilla, but it turns out there is a trick to getting one for free. An H-E-B spokesperson will tell you how to do it after the break. Outside with live cam, plenty cold out there. As we see the very beginning is a little hint of that uh, sunrise out there. It almost looks like a watered down tequila sunrise. You're watching GMSA. Just about 614 trending right now on KSAT.com. HEB is known for those fresh made tortillas and fan. In fact, rather Bon Appetit magazine called them the best supermarket brand tortilla out there. If you play your cards right, you can get them for free. HB, HEB spokesperson says the trick is to simply ask nicely. <laughs> Asking nicely can get you lots of things, Of course right? it can. The posh pets of San Antonio now have their own resort for a staycation. Barcaritaville Pet Resort is now open near the Dominion. Your pet can stay in cabanas, including ones with patios or luxury suites. You can also include accommodations such as pool time, pampering sessions, wolf or meow ma mail, which are photo postcards, and belly rubs. The prices range from $40 to $107 per night. That looks pretty plush. If you're planning a day at the zoo, consider picking a day where admission is half off. San Antonio Zoo has local days, which drop the adult price of a ticket to $8. Upcoming local days, March 20th, April 8th, May 28th, and June 21st. You can find all those dates and all of these stories right now on our website at ksat.com. Just ask nicely. Ask nicely. Well, let's ask Nick nicely how traffic is looking, Nick. Uh, thank you, Leslie. It's looking great right now. Um, very slow morning, which is always good news. Things are looking smooth out there. If you are on the way to work right now, expect a very smooth commute. So let's go straight to Trans Guide. Huh? 10 and Loop 1604. Traffic is definitely starting to pick up all over the city, which is normal for this time. But look at there, 10 and Callahan. It's getting a little moderate there. 10 and Frio. Those, uh, those inbound lanes definitely picking up a little. And 1604 uh, and Claiborne, Alamo Ranch, that 151 flyover, getting that usual build up there as well. Thank you, Nick. Crystal clear and mighty chilly this morning. Chilly doesn't sum it up. It's just plain old cold out there. So. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise, though. Yeah, great looking. And this is perfect weather uh, tonight and probably tomorrow night if you head out toward the hill country and do a little stargazing and moon gazing. And uh, obviously part of that's covered up by that banner at the bottom. But it is the waxing crescent moon. It is going to be first quarter on the 2nd and full on the 9th of March. Great picture, though. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. All right, it is cold out there, and we have hit freezing already, but we haven't hit it that many times so far this year. Uh, just this is six times. So far in the hourly readings, we've gotten down to 30 degrees. We did hit, remember back in November, 
right? Halloween night was really, really cold. And we did get down to freezing then first of November and then uh, a couple of weeks later, right at freezing right before Christmas. It got pretty cold down to 27, 28 and 27 degrees on the 18th and the 19th respectively. And then a couple of weeks ago we did hit freezing again. So this is only the sixth time we've hit it. And as far as the average number of freezes, usually 17 around here. Now the least amount was just a couple of years ago. Pardon me, that should be 2015 into uh, 2016 season. The latest ever has been on the 3rd of April, way back in 1987. So yeah, we can hit it again after this, but it is definitely not looking like it. So once again, as Mark pointed out earlier, there is the glow now of the sunrise. It is going to be spectacular out there. 30 degrees in town, 20. These are actual air temperatures, 20 Balverde, 21 Tarpley. 26 at Randolph and then the wind, which there's not much, but just enough. 17 is the wind chill at Randolph, 23 at the airport, 16 in Hondo. Most areas have light wind, so it's the perfect ingredients, what we call radiational cooling. You have dry air, which does not hold the heat in very well. You've got cloud cover, so or no cloud cover, so we don't have any blanket on top of us. And then there's no wind to keep the atmosphere stirred up. So the heavier, cooler air, because cold air is much denser than warm air, is that settles down to the surface, and that's why we get these cold temperatures like this. Very dry air upstairs in the atmosphere as well, so that's why we're going to have and have the great sunrise and beautiful blue skies all day long. No clouds are showing up in any of the computer models today, nor really tomorrow, but then tomorrow night, maybe a few of those high clouds are going to come on in here, and we have a few of them, a few extra ones on Saturday especially later in the day and then on Sunday as well. 52 today at noon, sunny skies, a glorious looking day, but cold 58. We'll top yesterday's reading by a couple of degrees, but still uh, roughly 10 below normal. And then tomorrow, 36 starting off in the morning, so not quite as cold, but still some freezing readings in parts of the hill country. Uh, chilly morning on Saturday, and we get up into the low 70s, mid 70s then by Sunday, Monday. Very warm, a couple of showers, maybe even a thunderstorm on Monday. And another front's going to move through here, but more Pacific in nature. So it won't be real, real cold, just kind of getting us back to normal. And the weekend looks beautiful. Yeah, another nice looking weekend, more clouds on Sunday. All right, thanks. 618, 30 degrees. One of America's most savvy business women says that she was scammed out of nearly $400,000. Hear what the real estate mogul Barbara Corcoran is saying in the GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. I have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now there's Sky Rizzy. Things are getting clearer. Yeah, I feel free to bear my skin. Yeah, that's all me. Nothing in me go hand in hand. Nothing on my skin. That's my new plan. Nothing is everything. Keep your skin clearer with Sky Rizzy. Three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. Of those, nearly nine out of ten sustained it through one year. And Sky Rizzy is four doses a year after two starter doses. I see nothing in a different way. Skyrizzy may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Ask your dermatologist about Skyrizzy. In this morning's GMA First Look, you've got to give up this crying stuff. Shark Tank star Barbara Corcoran conned out of nearly $400,000. This morning I wired $388,000 into a false bank account in Asia. It all started last week when Barbara's bookkeeper, Christine, received this email, appearing to be a routine message from Barbara's assistant, Emily, approving a $388,700.11 payment to a German company called FFH Concept. The only problem, Barbara's assistant, Emily, never sent that email. It was a con artist on the other end. I realized immediately it's something I would have fallen for if I had seen the emails. Coming at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of our interview with Barbara Corcoran. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York.
We have some good news to share this morning, and it's absolutely free. It won't cost you a dime. Best of Behind the Kitchen Door, we're talking perfect food establishment scores for some places right here in San Antonio on Wreath and Health Inspection scores. And did I load this wrong? Hang on one second. Let me fix this real quick. Bear with me one second. I can do this if it will cooperate. There you go. Yeah, we can do this. All right, now. Here we go. I got it. Culver's 5836 Days of Olive Road. Perfect score on their health inspection. So did Firehouse Subs at 11,600 Bandera Road. Oh, this thing is super sensitive this morning and not in a good way. Santico's Galaxy Theater 2938 Northeast Loop 410 right over there by I-35. Also Outback Steakhouse. This is the one up there at 12,511 I-10 West. And finally... Taco Cabana, 8315 Bandera Road. Congratulations on those perfect scores. If your place got a perfect score, we can share it right here on GMSA. Send me an email, bkd at ksat.com. I'm about to have a long talk with the storyteller, Leslie. It, it's going to be a one white sided conversation. I know. Well, Microsoft is warning about the effect of the coronavirus. The company says the outbreak in China is hurting its supply chain more than expected. And because of that, Microsoft is warning investors that upcoming revenue expectations will not be met. That could hurt Microsoft shares today. And based on sales, a new study finds the iPhone XR is the most popular smartphone. Trackers say Apple shipped just over 46 million XR units last year, which is more than double from the year before. The iPhone, they say that the iPhone 11 is second most popular. 625, 30 degrees. Did you win the competition? Well, I, I, I won. Yeah, I think so. Good. Well, the Spurs are back home, but they're still losing, just like they were on the road. We're going to hear some players voice their frustration in our next half hour. Whether it's for a midnight snack or a 4 a.m. taco, the staff here is always ready to satisfy those cravings. Hunger hits hardest here right around 2 a.m. The overnight staff at this north side Las Palapas is used to feeding the after club crowd. With the hours they work, they say it can be tough to tell day from night. How y'all doing? Good, how are you? I found out that their customers, though, have one particular daytime in mind. I'll show you what they think is the most important meal of the night in this week's While You Were Sleeping. An off-duty officer driving on I-35 early this morning hit by a driver. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta in just a bit. Those charges that driver may be facing. Coming up, coronavirus concerns what health officials are doing to stop the spread. I'm Andrew Dimber in Washington. Outside with live cam. Ooh. I know we're only two months into the new year, guys, but this may be one of our top 12 sunrises happening as we speak, but grab your coats. Welcome back to Thursday, February 27th. It is cold out there. We'll get details from you in just a minute, but the roadways are looking pretty good. Yeah, looking good. I think we have one or two accidents out there on the access roads. Nothing too bad, so it should be smooth commutes if you're heading to work right now. That's great news. It's plenty cold out there this morning. I mean, we're talking temperatures in some places you said are down to... 20. 20. Just up above 30. Yeah, it's 20 degrees right now. That didn't take into account the wind. There's not much of a breeze out there, but just a little bit. And so in some places, there is a slight wind chill. We're at 30 in town right now, and I think we dropped down maybe a couple of more degrees in the next hour or so. And then a nice big warm up, but that only gets us to 58. So still another cold day. Jacket's still going to be a fairly good idea today, but yeah, gorgeous weather. Sunrise, the uh, the sunset. And once again, look at how pretty that is. I, I have to agree with you, Mark, that I think this is one of the prettiest sunrises rises that we have had yeah I mean so far this year it is just spectacular and such dry dry air upstairs in the atmosphere as well oh excuse me 19 now in Balverde just dropped down a degree 27 uh, in the Braunfels and 22 Bandera Kerrville 21 Tarpley and Comfort and then in places there's a little bit of a wind chill so it feels like 16 in Hondo uh, 23 out there at the airport 17 right now is the wind chill at Randolph all the allergens are on the low side of course the updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, say 40 45 minutes or so. Another cold one tomorrow, not quite as cold. And then we really start the warming process. Cool mornings, warm uh, afternoons, and hopefully we get some rain down the road. There is a chance for it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Yeah, there hasn't been much of anything at all this morning. No, maybe in the last 10 minutes or 
15 minutes or so. There, we are getting a couple accidents on the access roads, but nothing on the main highways. So we are off to a good start today. So that's, that's good news for all of you out there if you're heading to work. Nothing major on the highways. Now, I did see right now there may be an accident. 35 northbound access road at Weedner Road. Looks like SAPD is on scene, though. It doesn't seem that that's affecting traffic on the on 35 there. We also had another accident in Wurzbach Parkway and Wetmore. That one's getting handled as well. Please be careful on Wurzbach Parkway. It gets very dangerous, um, especially when those first responders are up there. So please watch your speeds when on Wurzbach Parkway. All right, drive time, 1604 eastbound from US 281 to I-35, 10 minutes. And we got 1604 westbound from I-35 to 62 US 281. 8 minute commute so great time still there. Okay, taking a look outside 10 and 151. Things are starting to pick up. Look at 35 in Topper Wine. Those southbound lanes, man. That is that is a lot of cars there. 37 in Houston looking great as well. Traffic is definitely flowing and 410 in Jackson Keller starting to pick up there in those eastbound lanes. All right, Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Our top story and new this morning, an off-duty police officer driving an I-35 hit by a suspected drunk driver this morning. Happened on southbound 35 near I-10 East. Our Sarah Costa is live over on Bigfoot Street, where police apparently pulled that driver over. Sarah. Good morning, and that scene is now clear. However, that officer, that off-duty officer that was hit by that driver is expected to be okay. He was checked out by EMS, and he has minor injuries. But police say that off-duty officer was driving on 35 at 3 o'clock this morning southbound near I-10 when he was hit by a suspected drunk driver. Police say the alleged drunk driver hit two vehicles on I-35 South just before driving off the highway onto Bigfoot Street. The driver was checked out and tested by police for suspected drunk driving. That suspect was detained on suspicion of drunk driving at this time. His name and his age of that driver has not been released. From the South Side, I'm Sarah Costa, Case at 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Coronavirus concerns are reaching new heights. The president addressed the outbreak after health officials warned Americans need to be prepared. Comes as the virus is spreading around the world. ABC's Andrew Dembert is in Washington this morning with more on how the White House is handling the health emergency. Good morning. It is not a matter of if, but when it starts to seriously spread here in the United States, according to health officials. One of the latest cases had no known travel or contact with anyone else who has coronavirus, while a battle over how to handle it is brewing on Capitol Hill. As clusters of coronavirus continue to spread around the globe, here at home, the United States is wrestling with how to prepare for an outbreak on American soil. And the number one priority from our standpoint is the health and safety of the American people. And now the Centers for Disease Control confirming a patient in California contracted coronavirus with no known travel or exposure to another infected patient, believed to be the first such case in the U.S. The president, alongside his top health advisors, trying to reassure the country, but downplaying the danger Wednesday. He tapped Vice President Mike Pence to lead the U.S. response to the virus while asking Congress for at least $2.5 billion to stop the spread. Democrats and even some Republicans say it's not enough. What he's doing is late, too late, anemic. Hopefully we can make up for the loss of time. Airports around the world are doing all they can to prevent and prepare. At LAX, crews disinfecting surfaces after a Korean Airlines flight attendant who worked on flights at the airport tested positive for the virus. With that latest patient in California testing positive for the coronavirus, that brings the total number of cases here in the U.S. to 60. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, former mayor of San Antonio, Julian Castro, and Democratic presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren will be in San Antonio today. Castro endorsed Warren for president days after ending his own bid for the White House. The event will start at Sunset Station at 4.30 this afternoon. Right now on KSAT.com, you can hear what Castro told KSAT ahead of the rally and find out more information about today's event. Vice President Mike Pence will be the main speaker at the Conservative Political Action Conference today in Washington, D.C. Other speakers include Education Secretary Betsy DeVos and White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway. CPAC is an annual gathering of conservative activists and organizations. President Donald Trump is expected to close out the conference coming up on Saturday. And speaking of the Education Secretary, Betsy DeVos is scheduled to appear before a congressional committee today to answer questions about the Trump administration's 2021 budget proposal. 
According to the Washington Post, the proposed education budget calls for the effective elimination of the federal charter schools program. It would instead be lumped in with other education department programs. Today, a federal judge is expected to set a trial date for actress Lori Loughlin and her fashion designer husband, Massimo Giannulli. They face conspiracy and honest services mail fraud charges as part of the college admissions bribery scandal. Yesterday, lawyers for the couple said new evidence shows they're innocent. In your morning consumer headlines, free speech may be the law of the land, but it does not apply when it comes to places like YouTube. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco unanimously ruled that platforms like YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook are free to censor content because they are private companies and not part of the government. A conservative nonprofit group sued YouTube after the company flagged some of its videos as inappropriate. There are some new warnings of E. coli connected to the Jimmy John's sandwich chain. 14 people in five states have gotten sick. Federal officials think it may be linked to clover sprouts served at the restaurants. And you may get your TV, movies, and music through subscription services. Well, now Panera is offering a coffee subscription. $8.99 a month gets you unlimited coffee at its locations. The company started this in an effort to boost breakfast sales. Wish we had better news this morning for our Spurs. Slow start doomed our team last night. The Dallas Mavericks beat the Silver and Black at the AT&T Center 109-103 after outscoring the Spurs by 16 points in the first quarter. David Sears was at the game and some reaction after yet another Spurs loss. It seems like a pattern the Spurs have been dealing with all season long and just can't break. They go down big, make a huge comeback, take a lead, only to watch it slip away at the end. Talk about frustration. I mean, it's beyond frustrating. Um, just losing period is frustrating. Um, extremely frustrating. Um, and that's all I can say about it. You know what I mean? Nobody in this like like room enjoys winning. Um, we go out there and fight, you know, when the outcome is a loss. It's, Definitely tough. It's just frustrating losing, man. Uh, you know, as as an individual, you know, as a team. But you know, I can speak on myself. You know, I just hate losing. It's hard to go home and knowing that we're fighting. You know, and fighting the, you know, getting the playoffs and you know, just games just slip up. Uh, you know, so it's tough. You know, it's frustrating. But I mean, what can we do? You know, you win, you lose, and you got to move on to what Saturday now. Once again, they'll try to turn that frustration into a victory Saturday against Orlando. With the Spurs, David Sears for Good Morning San Antonio. Tip off for Saturday's game against the Orlando Magic scheduled for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. The Spurs need to start picking up some victories as they want to have a chance of extending that 22-season playoff streak into this year. I still have faith. I do too. 639, 30 degrees. Many of us love a good breakfast taco, but sometimes we need to eat breakfast well before the sun rises. Well, we're going to take a look at Las Palapas, which is cooking all those tacos while you were sleeping. Six forty-two. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Even after the sun goes down, breakfast tacos are on the menu for a local restaurant chain. In fact, any time is the right time for breakfast, lunch, or dinner at Las Palapas. Katrina Weber spent some time in one of their twenty-four hour kitchens. She shows us how they fill middle of the night cravings in this week's while you were sleeping. The heat is on in the kitchen. Even the drive-through is a hot spot. But things are only warming up at this Las Palapas. At just after midnight, this restaurant's big overnight rush is still about two hours away. I got you. After two o'clock, two thirty, when local bars get over, uh, get out, you know they'll they'll step in. After two years on the shift, manager Jesus Gomez knows the routine well. This north side location near Highway 281 and Loop 1604 often draws an after club crowd looking for late night munchies and his staff has to be ready. Anywhere from 100 to 150 tacos on the weekends, I would say a bit, a bit more. You'd be surprised how many people are out and about. Getting a chance to sit down like this isn't something Oscar Estevez often gets to do. He's usually on his feet. How y'all doing? Good, how are you? Table side during his sometimes 12 hour long shifts. I do very well in this shift, yeah. very well. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody knows me and they're very generous. Still, he says his life is upside down. He sleeps in the daytime and stays awake all night long. 
But that allows this loyal waiter to be here for customers who may be just like him. On this shift, it can be tough to tell where night ends and morning begins, but the staff says for overnight customers, it's always the same time, breakfast time. We do get some dinner plates, but breakfast tacos, water to rehydrate. <laughs> <laughs> they provide fuel to help some recover and others to keep going. Go. All while many people are still only dreaming about tacos. <laughs> Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> That's just not fair, is it? We're stuck here, can't have breakfast at the moment. Breakfast tacos sound so they good do. right now. Hey, when it comes to traffic options, there is a breakfast buffet out there, but the main entree comes from Officer Nick Solis. Ooh, and I will be going to Las Palapas today after work, that's for sure. Yeah, Manula weather. All right, here we go. Traffic. All right, we got an accident northbound uh, North Loop 1604 West at Bandera Road. Now, this is just past Bandera, so this usually there's not an accident there. There's traffic buildup here anyways, but now expect a major delay if you're heading northbound 1604 at Bandera. This two vehicle accident is causing some congestion there. Uh, at that accident. We have this accident northbound I-35 at Weedner Road. It's the uh, just south of Weedner or that off ramp to Weedner Road. Expect a delay if you're heading that way. All right, trans guy. 34, 35 in Brooklyn looking great. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, 35 at Alamo looking even better. And uh, 10 in Loop 1604. T traffic's definitely starting to pick up there. Normal for this time of day. 10 Callahan. Traffic's looking okay. Nah, just okay. A little bit of history. Mm -hmm. It was on this date that the U.S. hockey team beat the Soviet Union. This was the date? 60 years ago. 60 years ago. Okay, in so because we were talking about the also, Miracle on Ice. That was oh, in yeah, because we were, right, because we were, that's what I was thinking. I was right. like, didn't we just talk about this, but this was a different but, one. But they also beat them in 1960. Okay. Okay. And kind of a little asterisk to that story is Herb Brooks, who coached the 80 hockey team. In Lake Placid. One of the last ones cut from that team right before they went to it. And they won Seriously? Ah, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. But, well, yeah. thank you for that little history lesson. Yeah, yeah that's always neat because you, you think that it was the first time they ever beat them. Now they had done it before, so. We need a movie. Great looking uh, sunrise this morning, and I love this picture. Dr. Scott Kimball, he always has the uh, Longhorns in the cattle drive from uh, a couple of weeks ago, earlier this month, mm -hmm. and that's such a cool looking picture. Love that with that uh, Longhorn in silhouette there. Thank you, sir, for the KSAT Connect picture. And uh, wow, it's a spectacular start to the day. It is a cold start to the day, spectacularly cold. 20 right now in Valverde. You actually went, went up a degree in the past hour. 21 Tarpley, 26 Randolph, and uh, 24 up the road in Halotus. And then in some spots like Hondo, Randolph, the airport, there is a little breeze out there. So there's a little bit of a wind chill to deal with, not much. And so overall, we've got the perfect conditions for radiational cooling, clear skies, dry air, which doesn't hold the heat in very well, no blanket on top of us, and not a lot of wind to keep the air stirred up so that heavy cold air settles down to the surface. Very dry upstairs in the atmosphere, which you can see on the live cam picture with those beautiful blue skies out there. and. Boy, we're not going to have any clouds at all around today, nor tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow night then a few clouds kind of sliding on in here. A couple of them hanging around on Saturday, especially late in the day. And then we'll really start to see the humidity come back in here overnight Saturday into Sunday. So that's going to hold low temperatures up. So our low on Sunday is going to be about in the vicinity of what our high is today. We'll make it to the upper 50s today. 10 below International Falls, teens up there to the north of us, and this is, we're on the leading edge of this cold, cold Arctic air mass covering most of the country as of right now. And it's this huge trough right here over the Great Lakes. Nice northwesterly flow when you have this in the atmosphere. That's what pulls down this beautiful weather. Obviously cold temperatures, but then that really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. So that sticks around in through Friday and most of Saturday. Then we go into the latter part of the weekend and the upper level wind shifting around out of the west to southwest. More moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, more clouds around here. And as that low starts to develop, over there right around the uh, Baja of California. That's going to throw a lot of moisture and disturbances in here. So we may see a few showers. Hopefully we see a few showers and perhaps even a thunderstorm on Monday, lingering one into Tuesday. Another front's going to come through. This one doesn't look as cold, though, more of a Pacific front. So that'll just sort of hold temperatures or put them 
put them back down to where they should be because we're really going to warm up starting off next week. 52 today at noon, sunny skies. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous day today, but keep a jacket handy all day long. And then 58 for a high temperature. Lots of sunshine out there. Westerly wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Another cold one tomorrow down to 36. So we'll still see some freezing readings out there. And a nice warm up into 68 degrees, 72 on Saturday after a chilly start. Much warmer in the morning on Sunday. And then we make it up into the mid to upper 70s Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, a little cooler. And then Wednesday back down to normal. All right, it's going to be cold today, though. Oh, yes. Thanks. 649, 30 degrees. Traveling for vacation can be expensive, and it can be difficult to plan if you're strapped for cash. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to break down how you can save money planning your time off. Planning your time off. <laughs> like, what does that mean? <laughs> I'll take an L for five. What is that? Planning your time off. Got you it. Almost got it. the audio daily, daily double. Uh, the news you need to know before you go is coming up next. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're tracking the major development overnight in the fight against coronavirus. The first case here in the U.S. of unknown origin, the patient with no link to foreign travel. Dr. Ashton is here with what you should know to protect you and your family. You'll see it right here on GMA. Good morning, and most of that fire contained the back part of this refrigeration structure. I'm going to step out so you can see it, where you see all that charred and water damage through the insulation and some debris on the ground. Now, fire crews responding to this call around 940 last night. Firefighters with the San Antonio Fire Department say they arrived to heavy flames coming from an add-on refrigeration structure for the restaurant. Crews were able to stop the fire at that add on structure from spreading into the main building. At this time, there is not a damage estimate and the cause of the fire is unknown. That is why arson will be out here investigating for that cause. As for if this restaurant will be open for breakfast, lunch or dinner or any time today, that is unknown at this time because the food inspector must come out and deem the restaurant safe before it can open. From the Northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, they're small but mighty. More than 400 students in pre-K and kindergarten are working together to make a difference in the world. This year, students at Alamo Heights ISD adopted a new initiative to help reduce the amount of waste they produce through cutlery, replacing all plastic forks, spoons, and knives with metal silverware. Lisa Beretta shows us how this impactful initiative began through the heart of one child. That's coming up at 9 after Good Morning America. Time to check the roadways once again. Nick, what's happening? Yeah, we have some uh, major accident involving an 18-wheeler here. Eastbound I-10 at FM 775, just west of Seguin. It's closed down the all of uh, eastbound I-10. Expect a delay if you're heading that way. Uh, we'll get you more information on that when we can. All right, this accident northbound, North Loop 1604 west of Bandera Road, causing some major delays. We have this accident still at northbound I-35 at Weedner Road. Traffic starting to get delayed there. And here is 1604 at Bandera. Expect a delay. That's already getting very congested. A spectacular start this morning. Look at that live cam shot. Sun's going to be peeking over the horizon in just about, uh, say, 10 minutes or so. And it's cold out there. Back to 19 at Balverde, 20 Tarpley, 30 out at the airport, and a little bit of a wind chill in places. Beautiful day today, 52 at noon, 58 for a high temperature. Cold again tomorrow morning, and then we start the warming process. More clouds late in the weekend and the first of next week. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, everybody. Bundle up. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Good morning, America is next.